Welcome back to Child Time Pod. It's your host, Ren. I got a video today from Candace Owens Podcast. She was on what the Whatever Podcast recently, and this is actually her take on what she got out of it and just how she felt. And she feels bad for these women. Tell the truth, I feel the same way. So please like, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And let's get to that chow. Chow time. I'm assuming that my listeners probably don't watch the whatever podcast. And of everything that was laid out before me on this press tour, I have to be honest, I really did not understand why I was booked on this show. I had not seen it before. And my understanding was that. Oh, I was surprised that she didn't know about whatever podcast, considering a few of the other Daily Wire people know somewhat about it. And I guess that makes sense because her her people just book her for things and she just has to show up for them so this host brian allows a bunch of sex workers to sit in a circle and he sometimes has a conservative on to talk about their jobs so it didn't seem like the right fit for me to be sitting across from these ladies as they talked about their only fans careers or talked about the various sex work that they do as you know proud prostitutes I remember dreading this. I was talking to the PR person. I'm like, why do I have to do this? This makes entirely no sense to me. And boy, am I glad that I sat down on that podcast. Boy, am I glad that I was booked to do this show because it turns out that you actually can learn a lot from hoes. I mean, we learn from them like every day, guys. You know, like all my TikToks, all the videos, all of the videos on the manosphere. Those are all women. Women made those videos. Women made all these TikToks and YouTubes and things like that. And men just compilated them to teach other men. So let me just set this up for you before I show you a few clips from the show. Essentially, um, I was invited to sit down. Every girl across the table said what they did for a living. One girl was a singer and she leaned conservatively. But everyone else, there was one girl who was on OnlyFans, but she only takes her top off. There was another person who was on OnlyFans. There was two, two women that were prostitutes and said, essentially, that they help to save. You know, um, like they always want to talk about, you know, passport bros going out for prostitution and things like that. And, you know, how other countries, prostitution is legal. Prostitution is legal here. It's just not accessible, like, on the street. But Amer the U.S. is probably the number one country with prostitution, in a sense, because we're one of the biggest countries in the world. So it's just, you know, like, if you guys didn't know all those massage parlors, those Asian massage parlors, it just says massage. Yeah, those are all brothels of marriages. Yep. You heard me correctly. Because of them and the work that they do as prostitutes and as sex therapists, they sleep with your man so that your marriage can be saved. Now, of these two proud prostitutes, one of them was just 22 years old. And I'm going to show you guys a clip of her talking about how men that date her are actually insecure. Take a listen. I've had no issues being a legal prostitute just because I haven't been dating anybody um, within this time for that year. Mm -hmm. uh, as for everything else, um, it's hard dating. Mm. Um, I've ran into a lot of insecure men. Typically, those are the ones that can't handle me doing what I do for work. Oh, so we have boundaries and don't want our significant other to show off their body to the world is uh, insecure. Uh, so if I was doing OnlyFans and women didn't want to date me because I was doing OnlyFans, does that make them insecure? And, um... Well, just a point of clarification. So you've run into a lot of insecure men, and, and are they insecure because they don't want to date you because you are currently active as a prostitute? No, I'm saying I've never dated a guy while I was uh, working at the brothels, mm -hmm. at the Bunny Ranch or the Mustang Ranch. But I've been dating guys like between me doing camming and sure. dancing. So that's what I'm talking about. But um, you, you mentioned insecure men. What what make what specifically are they doing that makes them insecure? Is it because they're, they're insecure about your work? Yes. Like uh, I've had exes in the past that would cry about me going to work to dance at the strip club. Mm, okay. um, I've had guys try to control like what I wear and uh, say that I can't work at strip clubs or do OnlyFans or whatever. Um, Is, oh, sorry, was there more? God forbid these men actually care for you and want you to get out of the industry while you're still fucking sane. 
no and that's okay is it because they're insecure or is that just them having boundaries and standards i feel like that's i mean you knew what i was doing before you met me right so all of them knew exactly what i was doing before they met me which brings it to yeah if you have a problem with what i do before you meet me maybe don't get involved with me sure i'm very open i'm very honest person um you knew what i was doing before you met me if you don't like it there's the door so here see that's such a stupid argument what if i was a fucking fuck boy and i was slinging dick left and right before i met you and um you know you can't stop me i was doing it before you met me why should you care now that we're together i should still be able to sling dick that's the same argument like that's such a dumbass argument <laughs> like why would that work how can that work it just doesn't but these women are so delusional and thinking that it's so empowering that it's so such a great thing to be making this kind of money that it overtakes their moral compass and just everything like sane about some of these things. Here's the first thing that I want to say. I thought that sitting across from these young women, it was going to make me angry. But what I actually felt was a tremendous sadness for that young woman that you're listening to because I have a daughter and the concept of a 22 year old young girl sleeping with up to 10 men per night, which is something that she mentioned earlier in the show, five to 10 people, clients that she will see in one day actually saddens me. It, it breaks my heart. And I agree. I 100% agree. You know, we talk about never wanting our daughters to be on the pole. Like imagine having your daughter become a prostitute. It's, it's horrifying to tell you the truth. I'm just me thinking about it. And I'm not saying that we have to have empathy for these women. You know, yeah, we don't really care too much about them in a sense. But I care about society and how society's pushing women towards, you know, losing themselves over some change. Yeah, I mean, some of this can be a lot of change. I'm not saying, you know, some of these women make crazy money. But, like, they're just exchanging that you know beauty for money and they really think it's gonna last a lot of these women think it's gonna last a lot of these women don't see the after effects even if they like even if they get warned by other women there's plenty of women pushing them forward that it doesn't even matter and to listen to her justify why her relationships are not working out and to place it onto insecure men as she describes them and not her line of work, not actually what might be men caring about her, men wanting her to get out of this lifestyle. Right. Does she have a point that, well, they already knew I was doing this. Yeah, okay, sure, you're right. They probably shouldn't have been drawn to you in the first place. But the point is, is that once they try to get you away from this lifestyle, it's not an indicator of insecure men. It's actually could be an indicator that people think that you're better than the career that you have. Her justification is that she's making money. Later on, she says that she's gonna get out of sex work and then she'll be fine and she's just going to get married happily ever after. So many of these women think this. I don't, they, they not, don't realize that the internet is forever. You know, anything that you put on there, OnlyFans, Pornhub, Cornhub, all these things are going to be there forever. You know, your kids are going to be able to access this, these things. Your grandkids are going to be able to access these things. Like Your hus future husband is going to be able to access these things. They're going to come up. That the idea that your line of work isn't going to affect your mating strat, like, your, like who you're going to be mating. It totally does because it affects men. If I was a doctor, you think it'd be easy for me to get women? Yeah. If I was a freaking sewer worker, would it think it'd be just as easy? No, this is the exact same thing. Like this is like, the sewer workers for men, you know, like that's like the sanitation worse than that, you know, for for women. Sure. When I explained to them why it was that none of them were in relationships, barring the one 31 year old on the far right that was sitting there and who is I think she was 32 or 31 and is currently not married, that, of course, <laughs> 
when men learn and you are older and in your 30s or in your 40s that you used to be a prostitute, it is going to narrow your prospects, not because men are insecure, but because men have standards, yeah. right? And men should have standards. Which brought us forth to the topic of what is being dubbed hoflation. Friend of mine, Paul Joseph Watson, has a YouTube. I do love the term hoflation because it really, really makes sense. Like, you know, the inflation of pussy is such a problem. YouTube channel. And he spoke about this concept of hoflation, ho plus inflation, where when your grandparents, or rather your grandfather was growing up, he had to do less work to find him a high quality woman, a woman that wanted to stay in the home, a woman that dressed conservatively, a woman that wanted to raise the children, a woman who did not want to be out sleeping with tons of men or putting her naked body on the, oh, of course, then non-existent internet, right? Wanting people to see her naked. Now he's saying men have to work harder to find those same women. So they call this concept hoflation. And you are seeing it in this environment as you speak to these women. She's speaking speaking about it like so matter of factly and just hopefully should <laughs> it just makes me laugh. They talk about how the money that they get is a justification for this lifestyle mm -hmm. and they speak down about men. They have this fundamental hatred of men or rather a lack of understanding of what a quality man even is and where to find him. I'm going to show you another clip from this conversation where that same young woman who I honestly felt like, and I never say this, that she was possessed by a demon. She really was. And she was growing frustrated in me remaining logical and explaining to her that obviously her career was going to follow her for the rest of her life. And she tried to, I guess, trigger me as she was explaining how she saves marriages. And she tried to trigger me by creating a what if scenario regarding my own husband. Take a listen to her. And I do want to go ahead and put a trigger warning on because you may have some kids in the background. This is not something for children to hear. She's really about to jump into her uh, brothel mindset, I would say. Take a listen. A lot I of the disagree. perversion that comes, if you are not going to be acceptant with your partner, if he comes to you and is like, hey, uh, I really like getting pegged. I want you to peg me. And you're like, ew, that's so disgusting. Like, I would never do that. You want me to eat your I would never do that. Well then, huh? okay, what are you gonna do? Divorce hmm? him? Or I'm, what are you gonna do? Realistically, I'm asking you, you an old, it? I'm asking, hold on, I really want to, I wanna know, what are you gonna do? That's well, your husband. I He's think, like, hey babe. I think one of the things about marriage that's really beautiful is I know what my, my husband, before we got married, I think I, Before it can it answers, just really, really, <laughs> like the qu the line of questioning that these women you want to use against Candace is just so stupid. I know who, but he things is. change, and maybe he wants to start exploring. He wants yeah. to start doing what? Uh, so exploring say so he rim. wants to start exploring, and he's like, oh my gosh, maybe I do want you to like eat eat my, ass, and what? I I kind of. And I kind of want you to peg me. Like, I'm kind of, I kind of want a... Uh, these things don't just happen out of the blue. It will penetrate. This is what women, I guess this is what happens to women. Women seem to want to get these things done all of a sudden or, you know, explore these things out of the blue. Men aren't really like this, at least with the pegging and stuff. ...from you because you're my wife and you're so beautiful and hot and we're married and we have kids together and I'm, and I'm feeling a little bit kinky and I, with you, since we have this special marriage and bond... Yeah. How would you feel if we could just try this out just this one time, babe, please? I think it would probably indicate to me that my husband was involved in some perverse world, whether it was through pornography, that something else was okay. happening on the side, because these aren't normal things that people just think of okay. when they wake up. So like, what's hey, your next I'd move? really like a strap-on dildo. Okay, right. Well, so what's also, your next move? Uh, what's the ultimatum? He's wait, gonna divorce me if I wait, don't peg so him? <laughs> so what's the next move? Happening? Crazy. Uh, I would think that that individual would probably need therapy and not the kind that you give. <laughs> Yeah, when I was saying not the kind that you gave, I was part of, I was pointing to a woman that was in her 40s who says that she's a sex therapist and she sleeps with other uh, women's husbands and it actually helps their marriages. Yeah, so what was weird about that is suddenly it seemed like she was suffering from a demonic possession, like she was just a Chucky doll and she was just trying to say the most perverse thing that she could possibly say to trigger me. I didn't feel triggered by it. I felt disturbed that a 22-year-old was even coming up with this concept and I realized... No, I agree. The way she was just talking about, like, like you know, he wants to peg his ass, eat his ass. It's just like, calm the fuck down. ...but her entire reality had been warped 
because she works in a brothel and she sees up to 10 clients per day. And you have to imagine that she thinks that this must represent what all men are like. She doesn't, it never occurred to her that actually she is seeing the most debased, pathetic men that are in this society today, right? The, she is seeing men that have drug addiction. She is seeing men that have sex addiction. She is seeing men that have gone so far into their perversions that they might actually be requesting this from her. It is not the average man that goes into a brothel. It is not the average happy, happily married man that has these perverse thoughts. And yet she thinks that it's the norm. Her and this other sex worker think that it's the norm and that therefore they are helping to save marriages because, well, it must be all men that want this. This is where society is going today and this is why I spend so much time talking about perversity, talking about pornography, talking about the ills, not just of graphic pornography, which her mind is utterly polluted by because it's a form of her every single day. It's a, it's a facet of her every single day, but also the soft pornography that we have all become accustomed, accustomed to. Dude, there is no such thing as soft core anymore. Soft core is just every day. I remember when I was a kid, soft core was like just no bottom and you see the top and it's it was just crazy nowadays i can go walk outside especially at like disneyland or the beach or not even at the beach at the mall or something and i'm pretty much getting soft core porn straight in front of me live the pornography that we see when we scroll instagram and you have instagram models with their butt cheeks and their chests out this is the stuff that is desensitizing us right it is desensitizing all of us we're all victims to it i say this all the time when i see I an ad i don't even flinch when I see a woman holding a purse and she's half naked because we have become accustomed to seeing it everywhere. And where is it leading to? Where it is, it is leading to women that are quite literally prostituting themselves in the internet because they know that they can make a quick buck. And you can do that, it's true. I think later on in the show after I left, one of them mentioned that they make half a million dollars per year. It's gonna come at a cost, obviously. If you wanna make half a million dollars and in your early 20s or in your late 20s and then you're gonna realize that nobody wants to marry you, nobody wants to have children with you, nobody respects you for the rest of your life, right? The possibility that you might be alone, that's deeply, deeply saddening. And it is, but these women don't realize it and, and they actually embrace it, right? Like a lot of modern women are embracing that singlehood, that single cat lady lifestyle and these prostitutes and you know these 304s either they know or they don't but they know they know they just don't accept it and they they still want think that as a whole they can push men to accept these things and we're not and what's worse than this by the way is that all of these women we talk about how faith is at the root of all of this a lack of faith atheism i do is this is I, i've talked about this before i think the lack of faith nowadays is why people have gone so degenerate i'm not pushing for any particular faith or anything i think faith in general is actually good for a moral compass overall I'm not saying it's necessary but for most people it really helps ground them to understand how to behave because look at everybody look at how society behaves nowadays it's it's unsavory it's un like uncivilized in a sense nowadays why because there's so because the idea of religion and faith is so far gone now hand in hand with narcissism is to focus on the self what can i do for myself but worst of all is that these women view faith as a form of perversion. Yeah. Let's talk about this one girl on the far right. She was probably the angriest because I think she's now in her early 30s and she's thinking, okay, she has less time, she's got less prospects, and she can't really turn her life around. Listen to us question her, or rather the host question her, about why, why she's wearing a cross around her neck. Take a listen. Well, but wait, hold on. Is like that saying, a cross does it, necklace? Does it constitute, yeah, like, what do you, wait, yeah. I'm, okay, sure? really quick. Not everybody's since religious. Since we're talking about religion really quick. Okay, you have a cross necklace, but then your shirt says, Made in Hell. Yes, Can it you, does. I'm a little confused. Ironic. Can you, so, I mean, the, I'm a little confused. The stone is red, so it matched, you know. Why are you the, wearing a cross you on your neck? Are you color neck? coordinating with your neck? Because I don't see a cross as religious, so 
Okay. okay. Just like you don't see a marriage as religious. So I don't think don't, that they a don't marriage have meaning, which is why it's like people are at a stage where people are like, "What is a woman?" Because they just go, "Well, we're going to oh. call it a marriage, but we're going to sleep with other people. We're going to bring in prostitutes. We're going to outsource raising the kids. Or we're never going to have kids." You're calling it a family. It's not a family, and this is what it is. They just the words have no meaning, right? I'm wearing the cross. Why? I don't know. I don't. I don't think of it as religious. Okay. Well, Jesus Christ died on the cross. You think that? That's what you think. Wait, That's it's been what proven. you think. Yeah. So why are you wearing proven. the cross? Sex because I think it's cute. Yeah. I don't think the design wait, is cute. Yeah. Better uh, wait, wait, wait. Real quick. I grew up Hold Catholic. I was religious and I'm not anymore. I don't have to believe in what you believe. And I can say that if I didn't say you had to believe. I asked you a question. But I you're said, why are you wearing the cross? Okay, and you're saying that the, relig the religion... It's triggered this aspect of marriage is the only thing that matters it's not because people don't follow what you believe yeah. okay i asked you why you're wearing the cross and you said because you thought it was cute yeah i'm and glad I we got an answer she's wearing the okay. cross around her neck because she thinks it's cute i do would you i'm not religious also wear like a star of david it's cute. As, well, like, because if it was cute, would you wear <laughs> well, okay, well, it? Well, I, I just don't mean, know like, where we're going. I'm asking that because I wonder, well, like, I my have, guess is that you would think that you, maybe you wouldn't wear a Star of David because you're like, oh, this is maybe, like, disrespectful to people who are Are you making Jewish. the argument? Maybe, I mean. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just. The secular. It's a very, it's a very here, good question. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying. Devil's her questioning is actually spot on. That, that's correct. Advocate here, secular argument. You, someone might just say that the cross is just maybe, it, maybe it's more aesthetically Pleasing. Pleasing even for an atheist? I don't know. Sure, but liberals okay. are all about Look, like having respect like to Tom, like, and so cute. I'm just like wondering if you I'm think asking, it's... I'm asking, would you wear a yarmulke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are very oh, different Oh, are you talking things. like blasphemy? Yeah, cross I'm different I'm, from the I'm, yarmulke. I'm just I mean, asking, I was raised Catholic and I, that's just would not you something wear that I believe anymore. If you thought it was cute? No, I wouldn't wear... I mean, a yarmulke is completely different than no, a cross that's been adapted. This is so fucking... This argument is so fucking stupid. How is a yarmulke different from a cross? They are very religious symbols of those particular religions. <laughs> you can buy a cross like necklace a anywhere. There is, there's symbols like, of a religious... Okay, the, argument, the argument of why it's different basically would come down to like how Catholicism has been practiced versus Judaism in the sense that like Catholics... Why is one religion different from another? It doesn't matter how one's practice or one or whatever. They're both religions. So anything of those religious, you know items or sanctimonies like it, it matters it's the same thing the cross symbol tried to emplace it like an indigenous populations tried to spread it as much as possible and that's why in modern day a lot of people think that's like more okay because it was meant to be popularized it was meant to be a symbol that the masses should look up to and should see in general versus jewish symbols okay i would uh, argue didn't go through that well yeah. you heard it there first on the whatever podcast, it's totally fine to disrespect the cross because like, you know, it's cute and you can just like wear a cross like whenever like you want because it's just cute. Whereas you shouldn't disrespect the Star of David or Yamaka because it's somehow different. Again, this brings me back to that discussion that I had with Andrew Tate about why he converted to the Muslim faith, which I disagree with his conversion, but his reasons for having converted made me very sad when he said, that the West has lost the battle faith-wise, that people openly mock Christians. What you're watching is young women that are openly mocking the Christian faith. They don't care. She doesn't care. I 100% mean I agree. I, I, I'm guilty. I used to be very similar when I was younger. I, I would I somewhat openly mock the Christian faith myself. Not op openly mock, but openly disdain. And as I grew up, I realized such a mistake I made, just how I portrayed other people's religions and just how I viewed Christianity itself. You know, it's, it is a, a life changing thing once you're able to accept other people's religions and, and, and other people's faiths. I think a lot of people are just so intolerant nowadays to just, can't accept some of these things and are okay to live with someone even though you have some disagreements. I mean, to say, I don't believe what you believe, what do you mean by that? Muslims and Jews and Christians agree on the ex historical existence of Jesus Christ, whether or not they view him as the Lord and the Savior might be a discrepancy. But in his existence, what are you saying when you're wearing this with a made in hell shirt? By the end of the podcast, when I was getting up, I looked across at the girl in the orange and I said to her that I was going to pray for her and she rejected the prayer on the show. She said I, she didn't want me to pray for her. What kind of a person rejects a prayer? You might not believe in prayer. That's crazy. Like, 
my f I have a very religious my one of my best friends is very religious Christian and like he says that to me all the time I'll pray for you or when something happens with all of our other friends he says I'll pray for you and I take it as a compliment that he cares so much about what's going on or cares so much about you that he's going to take some time out of his day to pray and wish for, wish you well what's wrong with that prayers you might not pray yourself but if any person walked up to me, no matter what faith they were, and they said that they were going to pray for me, I wouldn't reject it. I think that what the Whatever Podcast taught me is that we are definitely facing a possession in America. You know, people are possessed by the concept of fame. We are possessed by perversions. We are possessed by sexuality. And all of these things are destroying people's souls, honestly, genuinely. And when I left that podcast, I still prayed for those young women because I think they need it. All right, guys, if you like this video, you are definitely going. <sighs> that was some serious chow, you know, shout outs to Candace, shout outs to whatever podcast. She's right. I, I, you know, religion and I think that higher power, believing in something that is greater than you or that higher power, I think is what grounds people when you don't believe in such a higher power or something like that what is the the thing you believe in the most is yourself now you become a narcissist become i think this is why narcissism reigns supreme nowadays because people can't look be, be outside of themselves you know through other means so please like subscribe down below i really appreciate that and i'll catch you guys next time ciao